In part three of his latest paranormal series, Shane Dawson goes ghost hunting in a haunted city. We're treated to a finale where it's clear that Shane really put in 100% of the footage that he shot and downloaded to make this not only the laziest and least rewarding of all three episodes, but also the longest at a staggering one hour and 16 minutes or so, which includes a very long car ride, full conversations about weird smells within that car and unjustified levels of fear and panic directed towards everything from a pricked finger to ordinary roadside garbage. But Shane rarely puts out a project that is solely bad in its technical execution. There is usually a dessert sampler of moral failings as well. In this case, he crossed another professional boundary by strangely redesigning the title cards of one of his featured creators to make it work better for his narrative rather than quoting them properly or, you know, doing the work himself. Shane teased us by saying that this episode would deliver what we were all wishing for, which to me meant that he understood we were all getting kind of bored, but then he gives us this conclusion, which is also pretty boring. So so I guess he thought we were all wishing for this series to just pass peacefully like a grandparent living in hospice care. We'll hang on just a little bit longer, Mima, because we've got 70 minutes of over-edited, under-researched, and poorly executed ghost clips to hunt, plus Shane Dawson rolling down the haunted hill in his Balenciaga sneakers. So stay tuned for a not-so-haunted installment of Shane Dawson Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content here on the web. And we snap it over our knee like a sacrilegious artifact we found in the woods to look at each individual piece and say, is it disrespectful to make fun of this? Or is this okay to put online? And you know with Shane, the answers are always dubious. Ma ma ma, ma 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 ma. So before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you want me to go back and cover more Shane Dawson docu-series. You know I will do it for you. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week and I have merch and a Patreon where you can watch more stuff. Luckily, there's not too much to talk about in the first few seconds uh, of the episode. Great, because there's like 60 other things I have to say. That's because he uses the same intro in every episode. Although now he's added this part where he's like, make sure you don't miss a frame. Please don't close this video early. My retention rates are dismal. What the? Oh, oh my God. I will watch till the end, but not because you told me to. Baby boy, this thing is an hour and 15 minutes long. I have a strong feeling that after you assembled it, you didn't even watch till the end a second time. Here's what's up. If something is interesting, you don't have to ask people to sit and through the entire thing. <laughs> so having this request up front is not giving the audience a super positive impression about how the next 70 minutes is gonna be paced. Also, I think that Shane could have made the title card say, watch until the end just because you know you had room for the entire word and you aren't trying to shorten a syllable so that it fits into a Victorian Christmas carol or is that the backup plan for this video if we don't see any ghosts we'll just make it about a vlog where we go wassailing among the leaves so green asking the locals for pudding right off the bat pretty much within seven seconds of the video starting I have an issue with how Shane opens up the whole intro using other people's footage in a way that feels like secret to me How come everyone in the ghost hunting community is more afraid of the Ouija boards being sold at Walmart rather than the entire aisle of semi-automatic hunting rifles? Here's the thing about Ouija boards. Those are toys, mama. You're playing with toys because you're bored. We also have to look at this new shady editing trick that Shane Dawson uses to essentially lay claim over other people's content. Without any context, I found this title card hard to understand. Upon first seeing it, my brain quickly put together that Shane was some, for some reason calling his group Team Code 3, and since the following title card was written in the first person, I assumed it was another title card from Shane directly talking to the audience, like the one we just saw two seconds ago, but in red. This basically confused me into thinking that he, Ryland, and their group uh, ran into some kids using a Ouija board, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. And then we were shown this. Is her mother gonna be okay if she's late? This is 
where I finally realized that I was being pulled in and fascinated by someone else's pre-existing content from a YouTube channel called Code 3 Paranormal. My first signs that Shane wasn't involved in this actual part of the story was when some equipment buzzed and we didn't hear him scream as though his leg had been taken off by a landmine, but also because it said their equipment went nuts. And I know Shane was so unprepared to shoot this series, he would have never thought to purchase a $40 electromagnetic energy reader off Amazon a couple days before this. Team Code 3 has their shit together. But what I found very interesting was when I went back and checked the original video, I quickly realized that Shane had basically redesigned their title card in what at first looks like a confusing attempt to credit them, but then he edits their other on-screen text in a way that makes it even less clear that we're watching other people's content to the point where this feels deliberately misleading. Tell me if you agree. Okay, so aside from Shane adding a quick little bars and tones and a title card with the video's information, Code 3 Paranormal Third Bridge video, their title card said, Code 3 Paranormal Third Bridge, Colorado. We had some minimal activity the first hour or so we were there, but then we went into a group of kids using a Ouija board. Aaron and Kelly do not recommend. In Shane's video, this title card reads, notes, we had minimal activity for the first hour we were there. Then we ran into a group of kids using a Ouija board. We do not recommend. I love that he just added the word notes there as though that somehow explains like, whose notes are they? Anyway, then it cuts to some Ouija board nonsense that we now know, or not nonsense, but the content that we now know is taken from Team Code 3 Paranormal. So midway through the video, Team Code 3 Paranormal has a new title card that says, after the kids had to leave, we sat there alone and the equipment started going nuts. We are outside in the middle of nowhere with no electronics near us, so it can't be that. In Shane's version of that title card, it just says, after the kids left, we sat there alone and our equipment started going nuts. So not only has Shane completely edited out the names of Aaron and Kelly, probably so as to not confuse his audience with any small details like the people who he's stealing this material from. He then goes ahead and deletes part of the second card about waiting in the field because apparently he felt as though he had artistic license to take some liberties with their experience as though he was ghostwriting their memoir. I suppose Shane thinks that by playing those bars and tones along with Team Code 3's video title, channel name, and publishing date, which he had never established as a way that he introduced file footage earlier in the series, by the way, I guess he thought that gave him carte blanche to just edit their words however he felt worked best for his story. I'm aware not everybody has the same level of education, but Shane did graduate high school where he should have learned that the acceptable ways of altering a proper quote would be using like an ellipsis to shorten or the word sick in brackets. Shane said, oh, this will be sick in my video and then clicked download. He said, Psh, no one uses that stuff from English class in real life. So I'm just gonna rewrite their story from memory using spooky typewriter font. <gasps> did I get the face right? I can never tell if I'm doing the face right. It's kind of like a, I don't want to get it right. Don't tell me. With this unclear editing and what to me is an unprecedented incident of Shane covertly altering his featured creator's content by misquoting them so that it better fits his story, it seems to me that no matter what his intentions were by putting things in this particular order and making them so confusing, it's clear that the accreditation was not sufficient. And the proof is that the average viewer, in this case me, and I'm watching this carefully, not just like casually consuming it, was not able to quickly understand and distinguish between Shane's original content and the featured creator's content, which is really where a proper attribution is meant to help make something clear for the audience. Is that not obvious? Shane jumps all over the place with his interpretation of fair use so that other people's work is literally woven into the fabric, dyed into the wool, and rolled in the toasted oats of Shane's obvious attempt at trying to be funny as they fill decades of minutes of boring stuff. When I'm watching these long Shane Dawson series, I consider every 10 minutes a decade. Oh look, here's an example of some more clear formatting for proper quote with the single dash attribution. So it seems like we sort of pick and choose when we want to use the rules that they teach in school, don't ya? Yeah, you guys have done this a lot, so this isn't like that crazy to you. I'm like crying and shaking. <laughs> oh really? Because your shaking and crying looks a lot like laughing and giggling. But okay, can you use one of those tears to moisten a lens wipe because this is one hazy looking shot. Sorry, I keep forgetting that Shane Dawson's videos take place in a universe where the quality of the image on screen doesn't matter. It's a bold artistic choice that surprisingly hasn't yielded anything of quality yet. Shane and family are finally leaving the house. I got a picture with Chris. 
<laughs> Ooh, a behind the scenes look at Chris's professional one handed camera work. This is so not the camera rig they need to be using on a running and jumping ghost adventure. Everyone who contributes footage to this episode is basically a, an iPhone attached to a loose hinge. They could stabilize their shots and make everything feel a lot less motion sickness inducing using a very inexpensive or even homemade camera rig or iPhone rig. Maybe that would even make an interesting intro to this video and something of value that Shane could show his audience and do with his friends, rather than standing around the same kitchen island burping LaCroix sparkling water into each other's faces. They even try to convince the grandma to come, and I'm like, that woman looks like she's in her 70s or 80s. You want her to come ghost hunting in a field full of rusty hills? Okay, that can't be a real suggestion. Like every Shane series, there has to be long extended periods where nothing is focusing on the topic at hand. Mom, why do you think that I'm gay? I never thought that and then you did the one video and I honestly by the end of the video I thought she was gonna come out mom why do you think I'm gay well there was that one time you posted a video on the internet answering the question and it took you about 12 minutes to say the word no no. Okay, so after all that, you're not a lesbian. So I guess the purpose of that video was just to sort of establish one aspect of your lack of flavor while also gaining views off of those queer baiting titles. Great women will do stuff like this, but then, you know, paint rainbows on their face and be like, ally! Oh, they have to stop at Morgan's house to get some headlamps and stuff. We need to take those knives with us. <laughs> yeah, honestly. For protection. This group is like a good idea machine. Shane said, yeah, maybe, or maybe not. Imagine you all trembling your way under a bridge at night with the jumpy nervous systems of a hamster, using only headlamps to see, and now you're each clutching onto the handle of a Cuisinart kitchen knife. The way you would all end up standing out in a circle on that overpass, slashing at each other out of panic, all because Shane Dawson saw the sixth sense when he was too young or something. You know what? Bring the box of knives. In fact, are you sure it's not too late to wake up grandma and force her to come? I'd like to get an idea of how easily her bones break before the icy season starts. A stress test for Nana's bones. We're stress testing Nana's skeleton today. Join us in the heart room. Once again, Shane mixes in more footage from Paul of Attraction, who he never says or mentions on screen, despite having appeared in every episode. If you start to feel a presence over you and if it's making you afraid, don't feed into it, okay? So start praying. Even say Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Wait, what was that supposed to do? I was not listening to the first part. Ooh, I hope it's an Alexa command. Jesus Christ, large vanilla, blue sky smoothie. All right, I guess we'll see how that pays off later. Is that manifestation? Again, a large number of file footage minutes here or seconds, let's say. But we get the info we need one way or the other, whether Shane has told us or someone else, unfairly. Details tonight about the crash over the weekend that killed five teens. They ranged in age from 15 to 19. He said, in honor of the young lives that were lost and their families, I will be donating this video. Not financially, but this whole stupid thing is now like dedicated to them. To all the victims of bridge traffic accidents and their continued rest in peacing. Anyway, Rylan, can you bring the shovel? Cause I'm fully planning on digging up a grave and showing a blurred dead body. If that's what it takes to get me on trending again. I wonder if episode three did trend on YouTube. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure it did. That also annoys me cause I, from what I hear, I don't know if it's true, but I've heard that YouTube hand picks who's going to be on the trending page. Like it's not an automatic thing. Here they get Morgan's head lamps, which Shane is like, oh my God, we're about to make cinematic history with this Come follow me in the dark. Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> it looks crazy on camera. Perfect. That's the only endorsement Shane needs to use it at the beginning of every episode. Not to be contrarian with Chris, but the only part of this that looks crazy on camera is that I can fully see Shane making a silly face every time an episode starts. It immediately takes me out of the tone of everything because even though I'm being served the black, red, and bass notes of a horror film, everything of actual substance is more boring than when I visit a distant relative's house for one hour. Shane does the same thing again with a a color bars title card and then going to show team three co-paranormals content my first viewing at this point i still thought that they had electric voice recordings 
and an EVP reader and all of this equipment. I thought Shane's group himself because he's jumping around so much. It's like, oh, we stopped at Morgan's house and we got equipment. And then he's like, and then we ran into kids with the Ouija board. But I don't know that he's saying that as Aaron and Kelly, some other creators. I'm not gonna play with a Ouija board out here. That is a, I don't wanna be around. They have that. a Ouija board. <laughs> I'm not just casually watching this for the first time. I'm watching it making notes and I still was confused. So that to me is an issue. Just as a general rule, you know that it's Shane's original content when it's boring as f and it's probably downloaded from someone else's YouTube channel when you when it gives you something worth watching or that could possibly be exciting. I don't like that what? at all. There was a dead did deer splattered all over the road. There was a dead deer? They say a lot of people go there and find dead animals under the bridge and they are rumored that maybe there's like cults that do rituals out there to kill the animals in the day. Oh my God, Morgan, are you suggesting that people are interconnectedly all over the country or even the world driving their cars into deer on the freeway as part of a cult ritual? I feel like this car ride is just a chance for them to all free associate and get themselves scared about weird things that might happen based on their surroundings. Morgan is like, what if a seven year old like choked to death at that McDonald's? And Shane's like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. I can't believe you just said those words. Now that makes it true. And I'm not just reacting to words. I'm actually reacting to something of substance. If I talk too fast, ah! Cut out the whole car ride or use that to paraphrase all of the research that you stole from these other creators. Use that time to give me this in a voiceover. As we drove to the you know, or like as this, you know, and then jump to little clips, do it right. Why is it so hard for you to take the steps to make the content original and unique to you and not just like basically a montage of other people's stuff with your boring minutes and minutes of time? Like, I'm sorry, Shane Dawson vlogs are boring. It's just you and your dumb family, none of who have any personality and the camera guy who is also kind of annoying running around with your white privilege. It's like, we can find that at any mall in America. So shut the f up. I think something bad's gonna happen. Oh God, please don't say that. Do you really think something bad's gonna happen? He said, Chris, as long as I follow through and edit this three-part series together, I know at least three bad things that will be happening. And it will still get millions of views and people will still try to convince themselves it's good, even though there are countless more interesting things to watch in the age of digital streaming. If you're a fan of paranormal things or ghost hunting, there's like probably hundreds of much more entertaining and scarier YouTube channels to watch. And then thousands more options across all of your streaming networks or on TV, which is why it's hilarious that Shane like want, wants to think this is a series we would binge on Halloween night. And so it's like anything of quality. People would watch this once to get an idea of what you're doing and then never rewatch it again because it was bad. Sometimes we just cut to the file footage to kill time and to add some other people's, you know, B-roll basically of a night time road that's better lit than Shane. There's a house maybe every mile or two miles, very sparsely populated. So for this many people to die in one place, it is crazy. I mean, it's not like you have to own property in an area before you're allowed to die in a car accident on one of its bridges. It seems like they could make it safer just by putting some street lights out there, but the heartless Republicans of Colorado probably know that would create a safe place for people living without housing to sleep. And you know how politicians are. They would rather read dozens more teenaged car accident obituaries with their Sunday omelet than give up even one ounce of respect to a poor person. As they're driving out there, you even see other people People, so I'm like, that's not that scary. There are people metal detecting, hobbyists. Like, what is this, 9 p.m.? I think they want us to feel really vulnerable because they're gonna eventually lose cell phone service, but I'm like, yeah, but you could just drive your car back. You could turn off their brights. Wait, Jesus ah, Christ. their brights are so bright. bright. Oh, oh, bright. Uh, I think it's okay, guys. I think the worst is over. We've driven past the bright light. You never know what mundane complaint might get a dramatic musical accent in a Shane Dawson piece. It's just one of the ways that he tries to get away with not having to cut any significant portion of runtime out of his raw footage. By making everything seem kind of important to nothing. When I tell you that this car ride is mundane, you're not getting the full truth of it from those words. The weeds are like unkept and scary. Oh, I'm sorry, Ryland. Should we form a chain gang of dead Native American spirits to get out here and sky these fields to a more comfortable, even level for you? A more uniform manicured length of grass for you out here in Colorado? Like, what are you talking about? I'm not saying I don't utter pointless, stupid things in the car too. I'll be like, cow. But I am saying that I at least have the wisdom to know when it's not funny enough to leave in the final edit. I don't understand what the bridge is for. Aren't we on flat land? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. That's yeah. a very good point. Shane
Kane grew up in the LA metro area, so I guess I'm a little confused how he forgot what an overpass is. He's like, it's a bridge to nowhere? It's a bridge to hell? Like, what are you trying, what? There's obviously a reason for it. I don't even know all of the different reasons bridges could exist. Like there could be types of bridges that I've never heard of. Don't expect him to do the research. You think Shane Googled bridges on this car ride? No, I'll Google bridges. Oh, the first thing that comes up is my search history for Jeff Bridges nude photos. Couldn't find them. Shane is basically like literally trying to portray himself as an extra sensitive person throughout. Very on brand for him. Oh, uh -oh. sick, like my stomach hurts. It can also make you get an upset stomach. Headaches are really common. But just to clarify, really common for all living humans, not just those with paranormal growths attached to them. Invisible chunks of ghost meat pinned to their bodies like Shane has here. Maybe that's why he has such bad balance. Um, I think that we really have to dive into how ghosts will steal the battery power of your electronics and how that might be an excuse for Shane's team only bringing one battery for each of their cameras on this expedition. A fresh battery in the camera when we left. That fused maybe 10 minutes of footage. Their battery's dying and they even asked me to use my cell phone. Because ghosts don't have their own energy source, they're quite literally draining yours. And my phone batteries, apparently, which frankly I'm a little more concerned about. Living beings already drain my energy in the real world every day. But it's okay if I can sleep in sometimes. However, if your iPhone battery breaks, you need to buy a whole new phone. And then what am I going to do? I might have to sell my limited edition Burger King sunglasses promoting the movie Wild Wild West. I picked these up for $8 on eBay, and now they're worth nothing since I opened them, and they're not that rare. Oh, Chris, here's that w lens wipe I said you needed. These are from 1998. They even smell like the economy was better. These are high quality Taiwanese. Nope, China. We're going straight to the wild, wild west. We're going straight to the wild, 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 These are actually kind of cool. I'm not selling them. What was I gonna sell these to pay for? I was gonna sell these to replace my phone after ghosts drained the battery. <laughs> Mama, I don't need a phone with these glasses. The ghosts come right on my <laughs> anyway, they're still in the car. Ha! <laughs> so much fun. I'm trying not to judge Shane and Ryland for truly feeling the need to protect themselves against evil forces. I guess I can sort of relate that to wanting to protect my expensive electronics when I drop them. Which is why I'm so thankful for the sponsor of today's video, Casetify. I've partnered with Casetify before and I'm so impressed with the quality of these products. First of all, they're environmentally conscious. The new impact and ultra impact cases contain 65% recycled and plant-based materials. But I've really come to appreciate Casetify's military grade drop protection with its Chi-Tech 2.0 technology. The ultra impact case offers protection for up to 9.8 feet. They're all wireless and 5G compatible. But what most people recognize about Casetify are their amazing and unique prints, curated special limited edition designs, eco-friendly options, and even customizable ones. I got my name on this one now. Sustainable material. Ooh, it's got a nice texture. The products are 100% BPA free, non-toxic and non-hazardous. And they feature Defensify, which is a coating that kills 99% of bacteria and prevent bacteria from sticking to the case's surface. Apple has released the new iPhone 13. And if you're getting one, I would definitely recommend pre-ordering your Casetify. And since everybody has a phone, Casetify is a great gift idea for friends and family. I love how well designed these products are and thoughtful they are towards the environment while also being fashion and stunning. Go to casetify.com slash nickderamio to get your new iPhone 13 case. And thank you so much Casetify for sponsoring. Now let's get back to the vulnerable out there unphone case world of the Shane Dawson experience. They still slip in the um, EVP reader footage, which like every time they show that that other YouTubers were using those, I'm like, why didn't you get one of those? Why don't you already have one of those in your stupid big house? You know, like, isn't that just like the most visual cinematic way that all ghost hunting shows make something out of nothing? They're like, oh, the energy readings are off the charts. It's like, okay, good, better be because uh, that's all that we're gonna see. Also, this woman said that ghosts don't have energy while other people in this video have said that ghosts are their own energy. What is the truth? We don't mess around with lies and falsehoods in the wild, wild west. We will steampunk spider your 
looking to go under the bridge and play with a Ouija board? That is next level. We were just gonna walk. Wow, so a few teenagers who are doing this for no reason approached it with more creativity and forethought than a professional YouTuber. And his van full of people who are old enough to have talked with their doctor about healthy cholesterol levels. These are the people who call themselves documentarians on YouTube. These glasses make me feel extra I see myself in the reflection back there, and I feel like I'm just sitting in the back of the movie theater of Shane's documentary being like, it's a piece of turd that someone smeared across a canvas and then froze in a block of glacial ice. Centuries later, is defrosting because of the hole in the ozone layer, and now he's trying to skateboard down a mountain with it. The disassociation is starting. I gotta focus. I have therapy in 15 minutes. I'm gonna be like, don't worry, I'm doing great. So they finally get out of the car. Shane seems confused about what ghost hunting is. Is that where it is though? <laughs> where what is? The ghost third bridge. Yeah, like is that where we're supposed to be? I think the whole thing is the experience. Shane is waiting for the scare actors with spark machines to jump out at him like it's Halloween Horror Nights. Mama, you drove to a distant bridge and now you're walking around in a dark, undeveloped area. This is what you get. The Horror Night starts if you break an ankle. And any of these people who you came with have to try to drag your body back to the car like a sack of soft boy sad meat. You know Chris is too skinny to even help. He would just film the whole thing. And Shane would add like suspenseful sound effects when his butt crack gets exposed on the hillside. He knows how to work it all in, baby. That's a high retention moment when my ass comes out at night. I should have just interviewed a YouTuber or something. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll still spend plenty of time retroactively watching those YouTubers' videos and then editing them into yours for added information and entertainment value. And that's like even easier than interviewing them because then you don't have to ask them and it's already like done. Not Shane coming up with the actual better ideas on camera while he's doing the bad idea. Like yes, if Shane had interviewed any of these YouTubers who had been to Third Bridge maybe before going, he used to at least try to talk to someone who knew what they were talking about, like, oh, I have a psychic, I have a therapist. Like, now he just is like, random cheese collector should have posted a video saying I'm haunted, so I'm gonna show that. They're taking Polaroids and there's some anomalies on the camera. Oh my gosh. Well, there's the two orbs and then there's two oh, behind yeah, next her as well. Wait, what is that? No one else has ghosts except for mom. Ooh. I googled undeveloped spots on Polaroid film and the company's website has a response to that phenomenon that I found within 30 seconds. It's caused because the rollers are either dirty or have something on them that prevents even chemical distribution. In fact, I feel like in this moment, Shane doesn't really want us to see how the orbs appear in identical spots on both photos because that kind of makes it more obvious that it's likely caused by something mechanical with the camera. Also, why do people feel like Polaroid cameras have some extra power when it comes to capturing spirits. Polaroid cameras were just a cool thing to show in movies because you got to like instantly show the photo. In fact, I feel like so much of the paranormal hunting stuff that Shane does with the utmost sincerity seems like a mix of superstitions from early 2000 horror films. Everyone sounds so pseudoscience-y in this. I'm like, it's a good thing none of this matters to someone's health. Fear is literally what feeds into the spirit. My fear literally feeds the spirit. I thought my phone battery did. Wiki wiki wow, wiki wow, wiki west. We're going straight to the wild, 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 wild west, cause we're dusty and the horse is clomping. Um, next is an, um, one of the moments. Straight off YouTube. This is so stupid. <laughs> I feel like Shane hanging off of this deep, dirty bramble has actually been a good brainstorming session for him. He's having a moment of clarity up there, rolling through the weeds like a nursery rhyme. Mm, so cute. This is stupid. I'm Wait. too old for this sh Again, that is a solid sudden realization to be having at the top of that freestanding wall. The spirit of Cadet Kelly must have made you realize that only the most immature people who grew up watching you would want to sit through this messy approach to the genre, where like the storytelling is actually prioritized over say, climbing a jagged cement wall for some reason. So Shane is out here realizing he's too old to be doing any of this uh, ghost hunting stuff, which I mean, I'm not gonna say like you have to be a certain age then stop believing in ghosts, but I wonder what portion of his audience actually believes in ghosts or takes this topic seriously when he himself doesn't seem to be able to. And again, they keep flashing back to being at Third Bridge to afterwards when they're back home. It's confusing, but we're, we're hyper fixated on those orbs in the photos. And it's the same ones that are behind her. Oh, that is weird. What is that? 
So the two girls that died supposedly haunt the bridge now. And there's nothing behind me, which is really weird. It's just so strange because I already told the ghost that I'm the special one with millions of YouTube subscribers. Yeah, well maybe these ghosts are big fans of Willow Smith and they think you owe her an apology still. And you know what? I'm with the ghost as part of the hottest supernatural dance group on the graveyard. It's the ghost dance down. It's the ghost dance down. Translucent skin and glowy auras coming down the road. Gamora giving all the sign of me cause it's Time for the ghost dance down. Time for the ghost dance down. That song is called Ghost Dance Down. Available now in my ass. Next we come up to one of the, I'll say, climaxes of the movie at least, of the show. It's really slippery right here. I just here. fell. Oh God, ow! Ow. Now this part I kind of like, and I realize that sounds really mean, so let me explain. Physical comedy. No, I'm just kidding. Although it is nice to see something unmistakably real and authentic happen in the shame production, rather than just overblown nonsense for him to overreact to. I'm so scared. You You're so high. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm more scared that you're straddling some graffiti that says love Trump. So I say don't even worry about the height. Just jump down from there as quick as you can. Here, your 50 year old mother will try to catch you. Like settle down Shane, he's just jumping from three feet in the air. Not everybody lives off of diet root beer and has the bone density of sponge cake. I hate, I, I hate, I hate the idea of, I don't want to say I hate these people because I don't know them. I hate the idea of hanging out with them or spending any time with them. What did you just do? <laughs> Island, what did you do? Oh. Uh, it is a drop of blood. And you just know that Shane subtitled himself like that to accentuate his adorable kind of persona. I feel like maybe some of Shane's diehard stands still see him as the cute, adorable plushie that he was trying to purvey in the later part of his brand. But I think to me and probably others, I see him more as like that sweaty cousin who you would never call adorable because it would sound sarcastic. Like what are, I don't see any charisma in this person. So and Shane stands are gonna be like, well, you're making videos about him. Yes, mama, because I found out that it gets views. I would make videos about you if you were a dumb idiot too and made it publicly known. And I would title it, here's the dumb idiot who thought they had a good point. Listen, my YouTube career will be just fine if I were to sit here and review movies only and Shane never made a video again or Shane started making good content and I could start telling you how much I like it. But that's not the case. People are interested in how bad Shane is at his job and I'm interested in telling them why because that's how we do it here in the wild, wild west. Ugh, new profile pic. Someone screenshot this and tweet it to me. I don't know why I think it'll be cool. Okay, now do this. <laughs> I don't know why I'm making you guys screenshot things for me. That's not very Will Smith of me. I can't see with these glasses on. What did you do, Ryland? What did you do? Like he pricked his finger. I'm gonna prick my eyeballs out in two seconds. Is that my name? Sorry. <laughs> oh. Um. Wait, it looks like it. It looks like what, Chris? Huh? Are you ready or not to commit to pretending like that looks like the letters that spell Shane? This is a threshold that everyone who records videos for Shane has to eventually cross. Are you willing to believe what you do not see? I feel like that was a reference to a movie that never got made, which again, is something I think my brain defaults to when the thing that actually did get made sucks. So they decide to turn off all of their lights. By the way, they waste a lot of time because there are other people like out there, kids on a Ouija board and, um, the, they just don't want to be around other people. But you can see how that information, along with the title cards at the beginning, making it sound like Shane was telling us his group ran into kids with a Ouija board, caused me to believe that they incorporated those kids with the Ouija board into their night, you know, which I think would have helped open up the story a little bit if they were like, then when we were there, we met these kids who happened to have a Ouija board. But again, that's not what happened. They didn't talk to any kids with the Ouija board. They just stole footage later and kind of illustrated it, let's say. But come on, like I literally thought that's what happened through my first viewing of the, of the thing. And I'm not a just some idiot. And there are plenty of just some idiots on the internet. And a lot of them watch Shane's channel from what I can tell. So they shut off all the lights to talk to the ghost because I guess that's how it works. I haven't done this in so long. Are we supposed to ask? Well, we come in peace of the tribes, so. So what, they should play their mystical drums for you? Also, I love this Shane Dawson as Lorraine Warren coming out of retirement moment. It's like, oh, I'm so rusty. I just, I could never, Elika Naman Naman Nachu Machu Melika Naman. I think they say something like, there's anyone out there who wants to grace us with their presence. Nothing happens because they're just out there alone. Me falling and hurting myself, you cutting your finger. I just feel like maybe these are all signs that 
This is a bad idea. Yes, it kind of is. It kind of always has been. For a group of people who are in their late 30s or higher to come out at night with barely any flashlights, all the wrong footwear, everyone looking through their phone camera, and not one god concrete goal or objective for even being there. It's like a recipe for disaster. All things considered, I think these two minor injuries and a terrible three-part series are the best outcomes we could have expected from this. We're lucky their car battery didn't die out there because then they would have just discovered a big pile of bones five days later with Ryland Adams covered in blood by on top of it like Gollum. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> If I say just kidding three times, does it make it no longer a personally rude joke? Let me know in the comments. Wait, good thing Shane brought out the good audio equipment. It really paid off here. Oh, that's a very specific thing to be hearing. It's no wonder your cheap little on-camera microphone couldn't pick that up. Shane said, oh, you guys couldn't see or hear it, but I swear. There is a colonial woman on the wing. There's something they're not telling us. Right. There's a colonial woman. She was turning Steve. butter. Was like Shane, honestly, at this point, you might as well add some horse sound effects real low in there or something. It's not like any of this is super believable anyway, or has any sort of an integrity outside of this. And saying that things are happening that the camera just can't hear is very frustrating to the audience, especially knowing that you spent zero dollars on microphones for this. Are you guys ready for the true this I think is one of the reasons Shane wanted us to watch until the end and I'm like it sounds like horse you heard that right <laughs> Oh my god. I don't know what caused that sound, but I find it interesting that the theory that it could have been a bird, like a hawk, or some sort of farm animal is never even considered. And it's pretty much labeled as the little girl scream exclusively for the next 20 minutes. So that's what it sounds like. That's what they're telling you it sounds like. To me, it kind of sounded like a horse or a cow, but I don't know. They heard some sort of animal cry out and they're like, well, that's our money shot. Now the whole group can hastily hoist themselves and waddle to the top of that bridge. Shane reviews the sound and it's even more scary when they look back at it. This video is finding new ways to waste our time. In 1997 there was a car crash and apparently there was a bad car accident out there. A girl died. A 14 year old girl died. You both just said the same exact thing. Why? This is classic over editing and underproducing. Basically like eating a sandwich filled with parsley. By the way, I think that creator who we see and his tool shop is Craig A. Bowers, and they they seem to have removed all of the videos or deactivated that channel, so those are no longer active links. And this person says, we'd seen an aspiration of a little girl along the bridge while we heard the Indian drums. Yeah, and you already used all of this footage in the last episode, lazy. Remember, I made a joke about Morgan saying that the girl was an aspiration rather than an apparition. A joke I saw went over a few people's heads. It's really satisfying when people try to explain a concept to me after I've just deep fried it in sarcasm, drizzled it in a self-deprecating dipping sauce, and served it up with a side of improvised alliteration. People are like, honey, she meant apparition. It's like, oh, thank you. I don't care about a single god thing in this right now. And they're showing me recycled footage from the last episode. I feel so weird about real stuff. Yeah. Like it's, it's fun when it's like, oh, but like, Weird, right? Yeah. Weird that you would include the same exact footage from your 40 minute episode two in your 70 minute episode three. Yeah. Seems weird to me. It also seems deeply lazy in terms of what you're putting out in between all these mid roll ads. It's staggering how little Shane shot on his own cameras to put together hours of content. Oh, oh my God. What, what, what? what? Oh, oh. That was, not there we got here. that was not there. Where did the ghost get a picture of Ryland's dad, Bruce? This painting was either staged as like a Hail Mary in case the group didn't hear that baby cow scream, thank God. Or it was probably already there when they parked and nobody saw it because why would you look right there? And they all had a narrow beam of light attached to their foreheads. But by now I understand that this is a group of people who somehow needs their belief in demons because that seems like their only motivation to not get injured and die out on this bridge. If you go to the woods or anywhere, like anywhere people live, you're gonna find kind of odd looking things or things that might seem creepy when it's just kind of trash. The worst you're gonna bring home with you with this is bed bugs. I just feel like a negative demon is attached to that. Uh, I honestly feel like, and I'm not just saying this, it's like, 
I don't know, whatever, but I feel something really bad. Well, I see something really bad, and I have been for the last hour. I love when Shane goes, I'm not just saying this because like, I don't know, whatever. Like, no, I would love to hear the ending of that sentence. What were you gonna say? I'm not, sound, I'm not saying this to sound dramatic for the camera. I'm not saying this to make this video work. Like, I feel like Shane sometimes dances right up to the line of disputing the criticism that he overreacts to things for views, but then he doesn't quite say it because that might call attention to the fact that he's even conscious of how other people might see him that way. It just screws up the whole identity. He says just enough to keep his fans intrigued and you know, the people who believe him to believe him without giving any ammunition to nitpicky fucks like me. Also Nick picking, I said it in a video before Nicki Minaj tweeted it. That needs to be known. Shane feels really weird after they finally get home from seeing that ghost painting that took all day. And I guess people are just kind of sharing their theories on Shane's ghost he has such main character syndrome, it's actually kind of embarrassing. I wanted it, I wanted to prove you guys wrong. Well, it's good to be back. <laughs> back to what? Back to forcing yourself into the hero role of everything you do? Past the point of any logic or reason? You thought you were Professor McGonagall up in there when those 16 year olds did the same exact thing as you But were brave enough to bring a Ouija board and smart enough to buy something online that reads energy And again, they were just doing it for a TikTok. If this is you saying it's good to be back Like it's several miles back mama You need to get on a golf cart and meet us up here where where good content lives She's back in the gutter floating up with Pennywise and all the other dead children who he wants to make a video about Oh, they have the same smile. Listen to this nonsense now. Now it's the, the lazy camera work that's proving Shane's haunted. People say when they go there they see either the horse running or a figure of a little girl. Well we didn't see the figure of the little girl. Well they see her on top um, of the bridge. When I went, when I jumped over the, the steel safety barrier I almost felt like I saw a small something and I thought I know it moved. Oh perfect. Turns out Vicky saw a little girl ghost and didn't say anything. That means we got everything on the list. Wow Shane you really are special, haunted, and different in a meaningful way. People should continue to buy into that. You know that thing in the ring where once you watch the tape, your face is blurry? Shane thinks he has that. He still is a weirdly human. Oh, the focus is telling me. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, it's being weird on you only. <laughs> I hate this. Oh my god, that's what happens. What, your autofocus messes up when you're in a low light situation with multiple possible faces? Yeah, that'll happen. Set your camera on manual. Teach your camera operator how to manually focus. And you'll never detect another ghost accidentally again. Anytime we've gone to a haunted place, after, like during the nighttime, the camera won't focus on me. Constantly, when the camera's only, really only when it's on you, does it do this like eye dilation type thing? Which it is when you're staying still, it's not really ever when you're in motion. It's time we give it attention or whatever, it, it, it's like in and out, oh my God. That's called using autofocus at night with shifting light sources. They try to make it seem like Shane's face is the only one that goes blurry, and I hate to say it, but this whole series was more out of focus than not. In fact, let's go ahead and make lack of focus my blanket critique for all of the hours we just wasted with this guy. Come at me, Shane Dawson stands on Twitter. I'm literally not afraid of you. There's nothing you can say to hurt me when your previous tweets are generating hype for the release of Shane's root beer scented slime. Like you can just stay over there and keep puffing your smelly Shane goo love. I'm just articulating my opinion. We've all got hobbies. Mine is making fun of what you like, so. America's a beautiful place and it's the wild, wild west. <laughs> Snuck it in again. And the legend of Ghost Bridge dates back to the late 1800s. So maybe it's from the 1800s. This is the 1800s. I feel like we're all really clear on the century now. I guess the theory is that by showing multiple people saying the same factually provable thing, Shane is somehow reinforcing the unprovable parts of this about the haunted area. To me, it's just a bunch of smoke and mirrors that adds minutes of runtime, meaning more hours of watch time that he's trying to give to his channel to rehabilitate it. Next up, Shane tries and almost gives credit to people who inspired him in his video production, but then fails to say their names. So if you guys clicked on this video, there is a divine reason for this. Do I think he'll probably even watch this? Probably not. 
He did watch your video and even took your advice. That's why he wanted to show his appreciation by not even bothering to type your names in that sentence when he was putting that title card together. He said, if you've watched all of this series, then by now, you know their faces, you've heard their voices, their names are lost to history, but thanks so much for talking about me and making up a significant portion of what I do. Oh, Shane loves this little resolution. You gotta, you know he was like, they're not there. There used to what be the two. There were two flashing lights in there. And behind him, are they gone here? What the hell? This is actually, I just, I have full, I know I'm gonna get made fun of, I have full chills right now. This is actually the craziest thing. No one's gonna make fun of you, Shane, since no doubt you'll do some basic research and realize that those roller spots faded over time when the chemicals in the Polaroid film had a chance to distribute properly. Actually, wait, no, he's using it as the conclusion of this whole thing. Ooh, nice soft landing there, chief. He said, that's an emotional conclusion that we can live with. I'm living. Well, I'm dying. This thing has me dehydrated, malnourished, and looking for love in all the wrong places. After this episode ends, I'm gonna go find a real life fight club and find some guy to punch me in the face till I sleep. I'm just kidding, but look, a cow. Oh, Hi, cow. They talked this whole episode about how nobody was around them, but they forgot to mention the fields full of animals, any of which could have been the cause of that sound that spurred them to all run and go get baptized. Ugh, baptize me in a bottle of bubbly cause I am cooked from reviewing this series. I feel most let down by Shane's use of other creators footage and not properly crediting them on screen. That's I think really where I need to see the most improvement from him. Otherwise, all of this can just be reduced down to a basic uneventful paranormal vlog that succeeded, you know, that got mil millions more views than it deserved to. Maybe there's some small benefit out of the creators being featured getting a few hundred subscribers here and there, but I really think it's more shameful and illuminating as to how Shane doesn't even feel like he has to put in any effort to credit these creators by name. Uh, like he even put a title saying, these two creators said these nice things about me. It's like, then who are they? You don't care? Cause he doesn't care about giving other creators a chance to gain subscribers. He's too busy focusing on him trying to earn back our trust. Well, I don't trust you and I don't think you're cool. You can write that on my Will Smith sunglasses, baby, engrave them. Let me know what you think about the conclusion of this series in the comments below. I'll so what else I should cover from Shane Dawson? It seems like a never ending well. Give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when we're going straight to the wild, 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 worst one. Wow, wiki, wiki, Also, I've got merch and a Patreon. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time.